yes, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of referencing and what that all is all about. I'm going to talk about automating art pipelines from A to as near set as possible. And I'm going to talk about procedural assistance. And I have also not prepared this speech very much. So I'm going to have loads of, yeah, oh, here we go, referencing. Uh, <clears throat> so the basic idea for an art pipeline is you want to have an object layer, which is all your versus point you have a rig layer, and which is the, all the rigging. You want to have your animation layer separate, and you want to have your rendering layer separate, and you want to have an assembly layer, for example, Unity or whatever, whatever else it might be. Why would you want to reference? Well, you want to enable all the assets to be maintained individually on the entire project. Every asset needs to be individual. Absolutely, it has to be a single file that can be controlled on its own. Project-wide changes can be made at a late stage, and you can fix one thing once and do it all over the entire pipeline of the entire project. This is all very abstract, so I'm going to just uh, go through very many things here. All right, so you have your object layer. The, your very best practices for that is to um, do, you can do whatever you want, actually, at the object layer, up until the point when you have your final objects, and we are done. Okay, that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> up until the point where you have your uh, vertex or vertex dependent, vertex order dependent things, which is when you need programs like Modo and XSI or Lightwave, which all have a vertex, vertex order independent morphing program, which becomes incredibly important if you want to do a lot of uh, variation on the model. On the rigging layer, a lot of the best practices are that you try to compute the weights and never paint them in, never hard code them, because um, you want to always be able to update the rig in all of the models in a very, very efficient manner. I'm actually showing an example of this here where we have a, a single character with a, with a uh, sword and a helmet, and uh, I can just literally just replace the helmet, and because all of the weights are automatic in this program, I don't need to do anything new to update it. It literally is just already there. It's already rigged. Uh, on the animation layer, the best practice is really it's more about maintaining a sort of clean dope sheet. It's a matter of uh, keying every, uh, every element on, uh, on every pose, and it's that makes it easier to ch change later. And this should be referencing the rigging layer and, and so forth. Oh, oh, okay, no. Re rendering layer, the best practices is to like, sort of try to build up the texturing uh, by a process. Don't try to do it each, don't sit down and paint every bloody texture. It is too slow. It will never work in a very big pipeline. Pixar does the same, they have the same sort of process to this. And so uh, even though I'm standing here frantically talking about it, you know, it has, it has credibility. All right, there's, <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's a single asset, there's a single model and one texture input that has been generated into looking like, uh, well, different things. Uh, this is a TV project where I generated all of the effects that you can see in the background of every single shot here in a single, with a single approach, one approach that touched everything and, uh, and, and literally, you know, like, so um, before every shot, there was a decision made, which effect does it need to have? And a single locator placed for that. And then all the effects were generated automatically. Uh, automatic information, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> there, don't do it every step, don't do every step, try to think backwards, why, how can I use one texture and in, you know, loads of times, how can I use every, every model loads of times? <sighs> okay. <laughs> What you, what you really need to try to enable all of your artists to think is how can they enable something that further down the line. They are, the, they are on their step and they only know about their step and they think about their step. Can you group the decisions together in central points? This is going well. The, what, uh, you know, like what, what amount of decisions can you make at the point when they are sitting there with the asset already open? Ultimately, what you really want is to, for the 
artists to just drop a single model and then have them all have everything automatically generated. So this is an example of a pipeline that I'm building for my Gladiator game where so I have a, this is all, all of these characters are a single model. Uh, they all have, you know, uh, obviously some degree of variation that's all generated at runtime for every character. Uh, so that was an example. Uh, the, okay, so now I'm going to talk about procedural assistance. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, so yeah. procedural assistance is 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 very it's very important to try to like sort of. Um, to try to assist the artists with the, your procedural generation. Don't try to just re replace their tasks. You want to, you want to try to look at which, uh, which decisions they make over and over and over again and try to help them make those decisions uh, in an automated way. Don't, don't try to replace their artistic work. Try to think about... Um, so, okay, so well, this is an example. Here, we have copied pose pairs. So there's a linear transition between each pose. And then this is a procedural assistance that does what does the decisions that an animator would normally do. So you can see the, the quality differences that, uh, that he's now doing much more. It's, 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 you know, uh, 